Okay, these are some extra problems um, from WebAssign section, I believe it's 8.4. So these are like trig sub problems. Um, I'm trying to get the problem so I could copy it. So what do we got here? Of course, it's not going to let me copy, right? It's going to jump. Let me move this to the side then, and maybe it'll do it now. Okay, so I think it's the integral of 1 all over x times, not sure what that number is. I think maybe it's a 9, maybe it's a, a 4. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to bet it's a 4. Okay, so square root 4x squared plus 25dx. Alrighty then. Expand this. Okay, so this is a trigonometric sub. Um, there'll probably only be like one of these on the test. They're kind of hard, hard to remember. Um, anyways, the deal here, uh, letting you, you, uh, or what are we subbing in for this 4x basically? Um, this 4x squared thing. So we're going to say 2x equals uh, 5 tan theta. Right. Um, then of course x is equal to five halves tan theta, and then dx will be five halves secant squared theta d theta. And uh, then we want an expression for theta equals tan inverse of two x over five, and then do our triangle type deal down here. So opposite over adjacent, and then this will be the 4x squared plus 25. Okay, we'll need all that, maybe. Okay, so go back to this integral now and start filling in the stuff. So I get 1 all over x, which is 5 halves tan theta times the square root of uh, 2x squared is 25 tan squared theta plus 25, and then dx, which is now 5 halves secant squared theta d theta. Okay, that's going to allow us to get rid of these 5 halves right off the bat. And what do we have? So secant squared theta d theta. We have a tan theta downstairs. And then this material here well, what is that? That's 25 times tan squared plus 1. Uh, 25 tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. And then I have to take the square root of that, right? So it would be uh, times tan theta times 5 secant theta. Okay. Then we start doing some simplification. We can bring out this 1 fifth. Uh, one of the secants will go away. So secant theta all over tan theta, d theta, and then hopefully that's something we can integrate easily. Probably not though, right? So thinking in terms of sines and cosines, secant is the same as 1 all over cosine. Um, 1 over tangent is cotangent. Cotangent is then going to be cosine over sine. And then we can remove the cosines and it's not so bad, right? Um, we just have this cosecant theta here, d theta probably have to look up the formula for that, but it ends up being negative one-fifth ln. There's two versions of that integral. Um, either you put the negative on, on the outside or put the negative on the inside after you integrate it. But uh, the version I remember, negative uh, ln cosecant theta plus cotan theta um, plus c. And then we could back substitute using the triangle. So negative one-fifth ln absolute value cosecant. Uh, is you know one over sine, so that'll be this should be a square root on the triangle. Um, hypotenuse over opposite, right? So square root of four x squared plus twenty five all over opposite plus cotan, which is adjacent over opposite, and then plus c. Assuming I didn't screw up the formula for secant, I'm probably have to look it up real quick just to make 100% sure. Okay. 
nothing has been going my way today. Oh, here it is. Um, so secant, cosecant. Yeah, there's two versions. I used the other version. Okay, so negative ln. All right, so that's that one. Um, assuming I didn't make any silly mistakes. Let's let's go on to the next one. That's that's the flavor, right? Uh, crud. Now the thing is. Now I can't see it. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, so seven, and I can't read that number. I think it's three halves, and really you have a negative seven up there. That's some craziness. Okay, so integral negative seven all over x squared plus seven to the three halves and then dx. I want to see my versions. I can't imagine they would put a negative out there like that. Yeah, that's that's the same version I have. Okay. Well, there's that. Um, so let's tackle this guy. Get it out of the way. Uh, this time it's another tan sub. Uh, to get the uh, nice uh, cancellation with the identities. We're going to have to let this be square root 7 um, tan theta. And then we get our dx is square root 7 secant squared theta d theta. And then we get uh, what? I, I need to figure out theta. So theta is tan inverse of x over root 7. And then I do my little triangle thingamajig. So my triangle, we got a theta here, um, opposite over adjacent, and then this third side would be seven plus x squared. Okay, okay. So this will be uh, bring that negative seven out. Integral one all over uh, square root seven tan squared is seven tan squared theta um, plus 7 to the 3 halves and then times uh, dx which is root 7 secant squared theta d theta and then we get uh, negative 7 root 7 uh, upstairs we have a secant squared theta d theta downstairs uh, we have uh, this thing right so Using our Pythagorean identities, that's going to be um, 7 times tan squared plus 1, which is equal to 7 times secant squared. So I got 7 times secant squared theta to the 3 halves. Um, so you get 7 to the 3 halves. Let's rewrite that real quick. 7 to the 3 halves is the square root of 7 cubed. So square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7, and you get an extra square root 7. And we're multiplying that. We're going to pull that out in front of the integral. So we end up with negative 49 times 7, which is like probably 243, right? 49 times 7, 343. Glad I checked. So negative 343 out front. And then we get the integral of uh, secant cubed to the 3 halves is just secant cubed. Secant squared to the 3 halves is secant cubed. So we get secant squared theta all over secant cubed theta d theta and then negative 343 integral 1 over secant is the same as cosine so this one works out real nice um, so that's negative 343 and then the integral of cosine is just sine theta plus c so that's going to be um, negative 343 Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so you get opposite over hypotenuse, and then plus C. That should be the answer. Seems like I should have got the same answer. So yeah, X squared plus 7. What did I screw up? Oh, it's divided by 7 root 7 right here. Okay, sorry. So that comes out. It's not multiplied by. It's just divided by. So that's a negative 1. 
this will be negative 1, this is negative 1, so you end up with negative x over um, square root of 7 plus x squared plus c. Okie dokie. Uh, what else? Square root 1 minus x all over square root x. Um, right, so they probably want you to do one of these rewrites. Um, square root of 1 minus square root of x squared, right, all over square root x dx. And then you're going to go u is square root x and then du is 1 all over 2 root x dx and so dx is going to be 2 root x du and then you do that sub and you're going to get square root of 1 minus u squared um, times 2 square, square root x all over square root x Right, and then the square root x's are gone, and you could factor out a 2 integral square root of 1 minus u squared um, du. And now it's a, it's a trig integral, and you're just going to let u be your x squared. So you're going to say u is uh, u squared is x squared. So u in this case will be um, 1 sine theta, and then du is going to be cosine theta d theta, and then. Uh, Theta is sine inverse of u over 1. And then your triangle, we got our theta here, um, opposite over hypotenuse. And this side is 1 minus u squared. OK, so here we go. 2 integral square root of 1 minus sine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. And then um, 2 integral 1 minus sine squared is the same as cosine squared. And then the square root of cosine squared is just cosine, so we end up with a cosine squared theta d theta. Then we get two integral um, half angle formula, one minus sine, oh sorry, cosine, one plus, I get it one of these days, cosine two theta all over two d theta. Um, then these twos cancel, and you got an integral of one plus cosine two theta d theta. And then that'll be um, theta plus sine 2 theta all over 2 plus c. Then you need to use the double angle identity for uh, sine 2 theta. That'll be 2 sine theta cosine theta over 2, which is just sine theta cosine theta plus c. And then we could go back to our triangle information. Um, nothing you could do with theta. That's just going to be sine inverse of u, where u was. Uh, sine inverse of, yeah, u, where u is square root x. Okay, so sine it inverse of square root x plus sine of theta using the triangle now. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse times cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we just got to uh, back sub the square root x's. Okay, what else we got? x squared all over x times 2 minus x squared. I think it was that. Really? Um, let me see what my assignments were telling me. That was the one we just did x squared over 2x minus x squared x squared uh, keep hitting the button now so what do we got x squared all over 2x minus x squared so these are complete the square problems these last two I think that you showed me um, so you got x squared all over square root of uh, negative x squared um, minus 2x and then plus uh, 
the, the special number we have to use to complete the square, and that's always going to be um, b all over 2 squared, I believe. Um, so negative 2 over 2 is po uh, negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Um, so at this point, we've subtracted 1 in. If you consider this negative, kind of attacking this, the only th difference between the new expression and this expression is right now we have a negative 1 added in. So to get rid of that, you would have to go plus 1. Okay, and then we have our dx. This would be the integral of x squared all over um, square root of 1 minus uh, x minus 1 squared and then dx. Okay, so um, what? What do we have to do now? So um, do your u sub on x minus 1. Minus 1 equals u. I guess u is now x plus 1. Or sorry, uh, uh, x is equal to u plus 1. So in the numerator, we may have to fiddle around with that a bit. Uh, I don't know. It seems like a real bummer. Let's make sure I got the problem copied down wrong before I start going on this long adventure. Uh, x squared over 2x minus x squared. x squared over 2x minus x squared. Yeah, not much I could do about it really. Um, I don't know. x is u plus 1. What a bummer. Okay, well, um, u plus 1 squared all over square root of 1 minus u squared, and then we have a du. Okay, um, I guess we'll go ahead and, man, it just looks like a bloody nightmare. Sine squared. Just wishing there was some easier way. Um, u squared plus 2u plus 1 all over this mess. Um, 1 minus u squared du. Yeah, I can't think of any easier way to, to pull it off. Hmm. Bummer. All right, um, so we got tr three integrals there. Seems like every one of them is a trig integral. <laughs> the integral of two u all over the square root of one minus u squared plus the integral of one all over the square root of one minus u squared du. The last guy um, I know, uh, okay, so the last two are kind of doable. So this guy you know is a, is a sine inverse of u over 1, so sine inverse of u, basically, and u is x minus 1. Okay, so sine inverse of x minus 1. So it's not so bad. Um, the second integral is a uh, u sub, so we'll let z be 1 minus u squared, and then dz is negative 2u du. Um, so du is equal to negative dz all over 2u. Okay, so this second guy is the integral of um, 2u all over the square root of z times negative dz all over 2u. So that will cancel and you're dealing with um, the integral negative the integral of z to the negative one half um, dz which will be negative z to the positive one half times two, and uh, then we have the back sub, right? So negative two z was one minus u squared, one minus u squared, and u is x minus one. So one minus x minus one squared to the one half. Okay, so those are the the second two integrals there. And we just have to figure out the first one. It's basically what it comes down to. So this first integral, u squared all over 1 minus u squared square root of. And we're going to have to do uh, some sort of substitution on that character. Okay. So um, we let u equal sine theta 
and then du will equal cosine theta d theta and of course d theta just equals du whoops we don't need that part we're doing a trig sub so theta will equal sine inverse of u over one did i already do this integral last time please say i already did this integral no oh well such is life it's very sad okay um right so where are we uh, then du right, so I need my triangle so opposite over hypotenuse and then the square root of 1 minus u squared okay so there's all that junk um, what do we have u squared so sine squared theta all over square root of 1 minus sine squared which end up being square root of cosine squared which end up being just cosine theta times another cosine theta d theta so this will turn into the integral of just sine squared theta d theta. And then you have to do one of those uh, half angles. Cosine 2 theta over 2 plus c, or d theta. And then that's uh, going to be the integral. Uh, you know, you cut it in two parts here. So that'll be equal to theta over 2 minus sine of 2 theta over 4. Um, and then it'll be theta over 2 minus, and you have to rewrite it as 2 cosine sine, uh, but half of it will cancel with the denominator, so you're just left with sine theta cosine theta. And then we have to use our triangle now, so this will be um, 1 half sine inverse of u, which is, drum roll, x minus 1. Okay. Um, and then minus one half times sine of theta is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, and u is x minus one times cosine theta, which would be square root of one minus x minus one squared, and then plus all that other junk, right? Which doesn't look like a lot of fun to write out, but I'll borrow it. Computer's not helping me very much at this point. Do, 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 do. I, yeah, I wanna. Okay, I wanna grab all of this. And I wanna move that downstairs. For reference, as I write up my answer. Okay, so there's a another one of those. So that this this guy right here will give me a, a, a plus two halves, right? So this one up being plus three halves, and then we get rid of this. And then there's this thing in my jig, okay, which I wonder if it could be kind of reduced a little bit. Probably can. I don't know if I feel like being ambitious today, but one squared it would be this whole thing to the square root right so kind of yeah probably you can simplify it a little bit um, this will be equal to three halves sine inverse of x minus one minus x over two square root of one minus x minus one squared so that was from kind of distributing this to this term. And then if you distribute this whole thing to this guy, it'll be one half of those. So you get four halves of these, negative four halves of those, and positive one half of those. So that'll give you a plus, no, minus three halves left over of those things. Plus uh, minus three halves of the square root of one minus x minus one squared. Um, and then you can combine all that junk together if you wished. Uh, three halves sine inverse of x minus one um, minus x over two plus three over two times the square root of one minus x minus one squared plus c, something like that. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of what they got. Minus three halves, which will be negative. 
whoops. So that first, that sine inverse should be negative. I don't know what I screwed up there. Maybe it was way back here. To you, there should be a negative um, from this guy here. So I think that's probably what happened. Yeah, it's negative. Oh, but that's that. That's the other thing. Uh, this one was just sine inverse. There's no negative there. So there's one sine inverse from that. Seems like it should be three halves. Gonna lose a negative somewhere. I wonder who just emailed me, or if that was you. No. Um, I'm not sure where. It, it's right. It's just they have one minus x instead of x minus one. I think sine is uh, odd. Sine in, sine inverse. I think is an odd function. I have to. Oops. To look it up just to freaking figure that out. The sine inverse has to be odd, man. That's uh, sine looks like this. What the heck does sine look like? Sine looks like a looks like a snail, right? Looks like this, and then sine inverse looks like this. So it's odd. Yeah. Okay, that's the deal. So it's it's the same answer. Okay, so there's that. Uh, then the other problem is probably just another complete the square type problem. Um, let me see what the actual question was in my email. X squared, 16, and 60. And, uh, so this is another complete the square. You got an X up top as well. Okay, and that's really just the issue there. So again, it's x all over the square root of um, x squared minus 16x. So negative 16 all over 2 is negative 8, and then you have to square that. So plus 64, immediately subtract 64, and then plus 60. Okay, dx, and uh, this will be x all over the square root of um, x minus 8 squared um, minus 4 and then dx okay. and then you're going to be doing a tan uh, sub so anyways uh, so x uh, minus 8 I guess we have to do a u sub on that on top of everything else that's going wrong uh, so x is equal to u plus 8 so I get the integral of u plus 8 all over the square root of u, uh, u squared uh, minus 4. Then you're going to have the butterfly and the two integrals. Um, so you get u all over um, square root of u squared minus 4. You could do a u sub on that one, okay, or a z sub. And then minus, uh, or is it plus? I guess it's plus, plus 8 all over square root of u squared minus 4. And then that looks like a secant uh, type integral. Okay. So I'm just looking up to make sure. Uh, it's not quite a secant though, right? Maybe it's an inverse cinch or something crazy like that. Uh, it's an inverse hyperbolic, I bet. It's not even that. Seems like it's uh, inverse cosh. That thing there. <laughs> That's brutal. All right, so anyways, uh, z sub on the first guy. u squared minus 4 dz is 2u du. So du is dz all over 2u. 
Okay, so uh, that would be the integral of u all over uh, z to the one half times dz all over two u. Uh, so bring out a one half on that first integral. Integral of z to the negative one half dz, and then you get one half z to the positive one half times two. And then you have to do all this back subbing. So u squared minus four, where u is x minus eight. For that integral is one part of it. Okay. Um, then the other part is from this guy, which I'm claiming is some weird inverse hyperbolic. So the integral of eight all over square root of u squared minus four. And uh, they give you, uh, this is like theorem. It's, it's in the section on hyperbolic functions. I think it used to be 5.9. Okay. Um, but anyways, they give you a formula for this kind of thing. And it's just going to be equal to eight times the natural log of u plus the square root of um, u squared plus or minus a squared. In our case, it's minus, and uh, a is 2, so a squared is 4, and then plus c. And then, of course, we're left with back subbing. So plus 8 ln, and this is, should be um, u. So u is x minus 8. So let me get rid of that u then. So it's x minus 8 plus the square root of x minus 8 squared minus 4, and then plus your integration constant. So it's all of that put together. Okay. What a nightmare. They're yeah. using a absolute value, and they expanded that one. Okay. I don't think the formula uses an absolute value. You may want to put the absolute value in there just to be safe. So put like an absolute value in here. But my formula doesn't use it. So I don't know. Maybe it's because of the... I don't know. I don't know why they would have done that. Well, anyways, that's the idea. Um, Sorry, the, the web assign problems are just ridiculous. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. But uh, Okay, that's, that's the idea. Hopefully, it's completing the square is, is really, I think, the most important thing you have to do on those. Okay.